What is going on guys and welcome back for another Cinema 4D tutorial. Today we're going to be covering the random effect effector right off the bat can't speak English. The random effector inside of Cinema 4D and um, there's multiple different things that you can use the random effector for but it does kind of exactly what its name is. It randomizes things. So in this picture is pretty much I used a random effector to get this effect along with some materials and render settings but I had thrown the cube which was actually a platonic inside of the I dropped a poly effects under it and then I threw a random effector on that so what that did was it randomized all of the platonics or the cubes segments which I had set so I'll go ahead and I'll show you guys how the random effector works. I had just thrown this one into my Cinema 4D R12 because I had the grayscale gorilla lighting packs in there and uh, I just wanted to set it up in a nice scene. But I'll hop over here to my other one and we'll get started. So the first thing that we want to do is find an object. So I was using the platonic in the other one and I had just set it to uh, the hexa. You can set it to anything. You can set it to, uh, I'll go Icosa for this one. And so for this to work, actually this will be easier if I show you. So under MoGraph, the first thing we're gonna need is poly effects. So once we click that, we're gonna drag and drop that as a child of our platonic. And as you can see here, there's a tab that says Effectors. So this is where we're going to drop our random effector. So that's why we need this poly effects to be a child of our platonic to let the random effector know what it's supposed to be uh, affecting. So while the poly effects is highlighted, come under MoGraph, Effector, and then select Random. So this is what I was talking about. Every um, segment that our platonic has is now randomized. So if we come back to our platonic we can set our segments. So the more segments you put the smaller the pieces go and the more crazy they get. I'm gonna set it to 30. Um, 20. 20 is good. I'm gonna set it to 20. So now you know this it looks it doesn't even um, look anything like our object that it was that's because under the random effector the position is checked on so I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set those to zero so this is very similar to our plane effector uh, that we covered earlier where we got all of these little options so we can affect scale we can check uniform scale on and we can uniformly scale these down to like 0.35 and th sometimes they do overlap um, let's see if I can I'll set this down to 15 even lower just so and when you when you really drag them down like in the image that I had done here I had set them to minus 1 so now they're kind of all oddly shaped because it is a random effector not every single one is scaled down exactly the same everything is always randomized so you can play around with some some of the the movements there's some movement on there you can throw rotation and might it might start um, making it look a little bit too crazy I don't know depends how crazy you want to get with it so there's a bunch of stuff there's the um, this bar under effector is how it's like the weight how much it is gonna affect it um, so when it's a hundred percent it's not when it's zero it's just a normal object um, the deformer it has all the same it has the same fall off as well so if you did set this to linear you can kind of animate it a 
almost to forming itself. Um, and you can set it all. I just like the linear one. It's nice and simple. If you do like a sphere where it has fall off all around, it usually it goes like back to normal once it passes through. If you know what I mean, because once I push this through, it starts to deform, and then it goes back to normal. Where is when you have the linear? It's just um, deformed or not deformed. There's no both. So it depends which look you're going for or what animation you're going for. You can do that as well. There's also the noise one, which is always a little crazy. Um, yeah, there's there's tons of different ones that you can use. We'll do um, the linear, just for now. Actually, I'll just keep it on infinite. I don't even need a fall off. We'll just make it constant. <clears throat> so, now that we got our... Um, poly effects here and we got our random effector we got our all of our segments different sizes different locations all very randomized um, so what I had done in this picture is I had actually taken a uh, material from the content browser so if I come under windows here and I go to content browser I had went to uh, Prime, I had went to Materials, and then I had went to Miscellaneous, I think. Nope. I had went to Effects, and I had grabbed this Banji 2 color. That's the, that's the color that I had used. And it renders out to be this kind of purplish, reddish, crystally kind of color. And there I had actually added another object inside here to glow so I just grabbed another uh, platonic and we'll change it to uh, the Bucky one and I just scale it down till it fits nicely inside our object here like so and I'm just gonna take the random effector and I'm gonna take the scale and I'm just gonna make it a little bit higher to like minus two so that it starts covering some of these gaps um, when they're too open it doesn't look as nice so we'll just cover some of those gaps so now when you can render you can it's kind of see-through so you can see inside so I all I did was I took um, a new material I checked only on luminance and I just made a bright um, orange color with 200% brightness under the luminance tab and then I just applied that to our second um, platonic now it has since it is a luminant object it does emit light so it changes the properties of our slightly transparent um, material here and then all I did was I added global illumination ambient occlusion glow and object glow and I had just set the glow to uh, two size 50 intensity and 150 back intensity and then I I rendered it out <clears throat> it's looking a little crazy because with object illumination um, the only light source is our glowing thing, so it doesn't really realize what's going on. So um, we can just quickly throw a sphere in an array, set the size down to like 25, and make the radius bigger. We'll make more copies. Now we'll just drag that up so we can't see it and I'll make a second luminant object with like 200% brightness and I'll just drag that on the array so now we'll actually have a light source in the scene it might be a little bit big so I will just quickly bring this down and then I'm just gonna lower down the things like so 
it does take quite a while to render out. I think my other one, I think it's because it was in the, the light room, but it had taken like five minutes for the frame. And I got a pretty good computer, so that was quite a while. So, it doesn't look identical because, um, well, they are two different versions, and this one has a whole light setup, and this one just has a quick little one. But the main focus is our random effector. So yeah, that's just a little fun thing that you can do with the random effector inside of Cinema 4D R19, or in fact any Cinema 4Ds, doesn't even need to be R19. You can pretty much f uh, follow the same steps. I know all the way back to R12, they still have poly effects. All the steps are identical. Um, but yeah guys, so hopefully you liked the little tips about the random effector. And uh, if you liked the video, hit that like button. Alright guys, I'll see you next time.